Hello folks and welcome to this video on speed time graphs. Now you can see a graph in front of you, this is a distance time graph and what you can see is a nice straight line. Um, now in a previous lesson you've learned that if we've got a distance time graph with a straight line then it's got a constant speed and that's indicated by the straight line and the fact that it's got a constant gradient. Now if we then were to say if this was a speed time graph then our question is, what can we learn from the graph about the motion of the body that we're looking at here? And that's what we're going to discuss today. So let's have a quick overview of speed time graphs. Okay, you can see one, a slightly more complicated one, on the screen. And I have divided this up into three sections, one, two, and three. And we're going to do some calculations on those three sections um, in this video. Before we do that, we just need some basics. You should be aware that on our y-axis, we're plotting the speed. On our x-axis, we're plotting the time. And in our SI units, we've got speed as meters per second and time as seconds. But be aware that this could be different units according to the kind of variables that you're looking at. Now, the key point about speed time graphs is that it uses us, it allows us, sorry, to calculate something called the acceleration. Now, the acceleration tells us how quickly something is speeding up. And you can see that in section one on the graph, the speed is increasing, and that would be an example of accelerated motion. When we have a speed time graph, we learn the acceleration through the gradient, or in other words, the slope. The greater the slope, the greater the acceleration of the object. Now, when we want to write this down in equation form, we write it like this. And you may not be familiar with these symbols. A here is the acceleration, and T here is the time. V and U are speeds. V is the final speed, and U is the initial speed. And these are, um, this is notation that we use in many physics lessons, but particularly in the IB. So if you are working in different syllabus, syllabus, you may use slightly different notation, but in this case, we're going to use V and U. So let's have a look at the graph. As I've said, we've got three um, sections and we can calculate therefore three accelerations. Let's look at the first one, section one, where you can see that we start at a speed of zero and we end at a speed of 12 meters per second. And then we've got a time of 10 seconds. So if we're wanting to calculate our acceleration in section one, that's this one here, what we would do is we take the final speed, 12, take away the initial speed, zero, and divide that by 10. We would um, then get our answer of 1.2. We've got some quite funny uh, units there. We would call these meters per second squared. So the acceleration during uh, section one is 1.2 meters per second squared. If we then go on to section two, we can see that, well, there's no acceleration here because the speed at the end is the same as the speed at the beginning. But we still have to do some calculations. We do it like this. Our final speed was 12. Our initial speed is 12. 12 take away 12 is zero. We have to be a bit careful with the time. The time is the difference between the beginning and the end time. And so therefore we take 30 and take away 10 and we've got 20 from that. The answer is still zero. Zero, take, zero divided by anything is going to give zero. This means we're at zero acceleration, but be careful. We're still traveling during this time. And it's a common misconception that if we have zero um, acceleration, a lot of people think we're standing still. Actually, we're still moving. We're just not changing. Finally, we've got our section three. And hopefully you can see here that the gradient of the graph is negative. And what that means is the speed is decreasing. If the speed is decreasing, we are expecting a negative acceleration. Well, how do we get that? We notice that our final speed is zero. Our initial speed was 12. And the time we took, well, it took us 30 to 45, that's 15 seconds. So when we put the numbers into our equation, we've got zero take away 12, um, divide, divided by 45 minus 30, so minus 12 over 15. In other words, zero, minus 0 0.8 meters per second squared. As again, 
that is a negative acceleration, or in other words, a deceleration, um, depending on how you want to look at that. And what that tells us is that the object is slowing down. So take a second to process um, that, have a think, have I followed this carefully? If not, by all means, take another chance to um, watch again, and then you can proceed with the rest of your exercise.